Yeah, like you're saying, it's, it's still a great draft here for Darkseid, and maybe if they were up against a team like One Move or VP, something like that, you know, you'd have, I'd have a little bit more belief, but Team Spirit at the minute looks so, so strong. And they have really good heroes, you know, in terms of taking objectives. So even if things start getting south from them, for them, they do have ways to go about it, right? There's a farming, beast match, they part of a uh, split push, and then you go into the uh, pit when you find an opening and still get good objectives on the map. Yeah. Um, so guys, get into the first game. But first, we are going to take a quick word from our sponsors over at EGB. So check it out and we'll be right back. Yeah, I need, yeah, I need, yeah, I need, yeah, I need. Yeah, I need. Prepare for battle. Yeah, I need. Quiere ganar? Gana, 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 So, as we come back into this, we will be getting started here with a smoke from Team Spirit. Moving through the jungle as Dark Side splitting up a little bit. So, I wonder if uh, Team Spirit think that they've got this. Potential to go for first, but the smoke will break him on Poshka. Roger still walks himself in, though, and Poshka not skilled anything up just yet. So won't be able to slow him down or put any damage, and Roger will be able to get himself away. You know, and he was up, walking up to a high ground anyway, so would have been fine just walking away from the edge there. When you have a shadow demon, if you catch someone alone, you can block him in with the illusions, you know. Mm -hmm. If you have two heroes, you disrupt him. If you position yourselves well, you can get blocked in by the, uh, by the illusions and just die. Oh, man, they, uh... They saw that ward and also did their homework. They knew what was up. Yeah, we'll they be getting that yeah, reward at the start. It's very nicely done by Team Spirit. And this is why you go for a for a smoke when you're planting vision because you're gonna be spotted and then there's just some free golden experience towards the enemies. Yeah, and let's see. I mean, the stacking up three heroes around this mid lane. So I wonder if Dark Side are gonna try and contest into this because you can see Team Spirit here. The they are grouping begins. up on both sides of the river. They want to be taking the boy both of these river and taking three in, in all. And they're gonna be able to get. Did they even get all they do? So Seneco is gonna be disrupted. He's still gonna be able to get the tether away. Um, but it's still gonna be three bounty runs here going the way of Team Spirit. So a good start for them. And yeah, Dark Side didn't want to contest into either side of that river. Shadow Demons making world uh happy multiplying balloons doesn't really look like uh like a, someone who uh, likes kids you know kind of looks scary but uh, uh, it's fine and that uh, odds are looking scary here for dark side yeah no nobody believes them it seems like no no and yeah to start off with the disruption comes out which means that you know collapse if he wants to get a position to throw some axes out here as well dizzy and gonna go for that first point into the aphotic shield for the protection in the lane but there is still a lot of frost to come through and it, once mirror hits that level two and the shadow poison starts to fly through Seneko so might have a bad time in this lane he is almost definitely if those shadow poisons land it's gonna have a bad time in this lane and also one thing we haven't discussed is the uh, shadow demon versus the abaddon this hero uh, when he gets his Curse of Awareness, and he's probably gonna do it in level 2, the illusions are gonna get the silence on him so easy. So Dizzying is gonna be suffering from the illusions in the lane. Yeah, no, that is another uh, point that, yeah, this pickup for the Shadow Demon, if he can turn it around onto the Abaddon, which, I mean, no level 2 just yet, but still some harass coming through. The Fortnite Shield should be broken. Uh, Mira takes some damage from it, but yeah, the Illusion's chasing down this is an Echo. So another Fortnite Shield. That looks pretty funky there on the IO. I'm not gonna lie, that looks pretty cool. I didn't know you could sing, Rob. Go on. Explain. <laughs> Oh, you said he's going in on the IO or whatever, or a Photic Shield. I don't know what it was, but uh, that was a uh, nice in tune for sure. Anyways, though, yeah, I, I do like how the Aphotic Shield looks. And this thing, is he even going to skill the Curse of Avernus? Or maybe he just leaves the skill points. Yeah, no, maybe not. And yeah, no, you wouldn't be saying that if you actually heard me at karaoke. But uh, for now, back to the actual game. Top lane here, we can see that Yatero um, coming through up against Lizzie as well as Roger. I mean, Roger, you can see, I mean, he's going to have the Telekinesis to Fade Bolt as well. So if Yatero gets any, uh, any ideas about jumping onto Blizzy like this, there might be a Fade Bolt, there might be a save with this Telekinesis. But there is going to be a shot jumping now as well, the Swatch Buckle to come out. But it's still a lot of damage onto the Pangolier. You don't want to be using the Telekinesis uh, like that because it's... A yeah. It's a 28 second cooldown spell and then you could be putting yourself or the tango uh in uh in a lot of trouble right so you're just trying to, to make sure that you do not use it right yeah and it, it looks like it's gonna be the fade bolt spam coming out to, to help out and again lizzie has a ways away with the swashbuckle but still though we've seen 
and every single game throwing out the harass and he's going to be coming in with the impetus now as well um so it's gonna be interesting to see how they try and deal with this in the off lane. It looks like the aggression not as big as we've seen in the past series, but still, he's gonna be able to throw these right clicks out, and Roger has to be careful about how many he does pick up. Uh, I mean, that's that's always what happens against the enchanters. The Rubik, you know, he's one of the heroes that can actually stand his ground versus the enchanters. Use the Babel to reduce the damage, and we can actually trade somewhat effectively. Yeah. But Yatta are not being shy about chasing down onto Blizzy, so Blizzy may be trying to force out some Radiance of those mana use here with Squad Fuck as well as the Shield Crash. And uh, how is the mid lane doing as well? I mean, Lesh is always gonna do okay versus the Puck, but in the end, there's very little kill potential here. Whoever dies definitely made the big mistake, and it's just gonna be a uh, farm in the harass trade. Yeah. It's gonna be Yatsura that picks up the first blood on the top lane here. I was watching the chase down as well. It looks like Mira is gonna be able to do the destruction, comes out onto Dizzy. He's got it in a second now as well. He can throw it back onto the Abaddon if he wants to, but it will be the first blood going the way of Yatsura with that chase down onto Pango. Yeah, there was uh, aggression coming out from Dark Side on the bottom lane and from Spirit on the top lane, but Team Spirit obviously coming out ahead. I really like how Team Spirit played the top lane because Yaro never overextended and he was just being annoying to Blizzy and then the uh, opportunity presented Denied. itself at, at yeah. some point and he utilized it. Yeah, and again, the bottom lane, like you say, these illusions coming through here. You're going to be able to get the sound something to the about him. So he's going to be taking some harass to Shadow Poisons. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. That was so close to being able to take him down. I just it hurts. Of course, you're gonna be starting off with the magic wand and against the uh, against the shadow demon, and you're gonna get yourself healthier. But it's uh, it's still kind of scary to to see how easily you can take away your HP. Yeah, and again it comes out now. They're gonna try and maybe pop the aphotic shield. The silence comes through. They pop the aphotic shield. No, and those shadow poisons. They shouldn't actually. Maybe it does break first. Because those shadow poisons. If you can refresh, maybe get one more. Aphotic oh, shield does still stand. I lost. Let's take a ball of it down this time. Aposka, top lane gets the kill. Is he gonna be able to get himself away? Blizzy no trying to lay down. Aposka with the nature's attendance though. So because he's gonna kill him. He's gonna turn it around. Yeah, the, he's got the impetus damage. If he wants to throw this out now as well, one more it connects. He was just waiting for the distance, waiting for Blizzy to run himself away from that. We talked about in the last series, turn yourself in and maybe then try and swash for himself out. Rabel will get the kill from Aposka. That's a good couple of pickups though. Oh boy, he Reviled. just solo killed the entire offlane with the enchantress and the only reason he died is because Rabel rotated there. That means Ursa is freely farming and Blizzy is being doubled in terms of net worth six minutes in. You don't see that too often. No, you know, you absolutely do not here. And if you're Yasuo, you know, what are you... It's actually going to be going to what the Battle Fury looks like, so he wants to be able to press this advantage. Uh, I mean, that's, I guess, 95% of the times you're going to go for a battle fury and here, some maybe Radiance even more. Tower uh, just in the case, you're going to go for a defusal. If, let's say, you have a Magnus, but even then, I think people are still decide to go for a, for a battle fury. I, I, don't, I don't know when's the last time I saw people skip that one. Yeah, um, yeah like you say, even with that steroid, it just means that you're able to claim that farm a little bit quicker here. Mid lane, I mean, Maposhka's playing. He's got himself a Warpine Raider now as well. Rabel, is he with the rotation from Seneco? Are they going to be able to get it? They're going to be able to get the bounce out from that acorn here with the seed shot. Looks like they're not going to be able to take advantage with Roger being close. Three heroes here inside of Dark Side, helping protect onto to Rabel. Yeah, okay, they're, uh, they're farming the Warpine Raider. It's going to be 50 gold if they get it. And, uh,. It takes them forever. Poshka, I, I mean, this is just him bullying. This is not <laughs> nice. No, he's even, he's just rubbing it in the face of now the players on the dark side. Um, and yeah, with the, the deny, he, it makes dark side supports waste so much time here. Rabel going back to the lane, but um, at least Rabel has the net worth lead over the top for now. But these stacks in the jungle, he's gonna be able to get himself the bounty room here as well. Lal, Gato just continues to farm. Collapse quietly having a good time on the bottom lane. It's it team spirit, you know. At least the abaddon hasn't gone down just yet. He's been able to find this farm. Um, and it is gonna be the radiance build coming out from the abaddon as well, which should help him in this game. This Meposhka is just showcasing that smart detection does not work, guys. So <laughs> that uh, definitely someone needs to uh, deal with that. But he's continuing to be a problem. Warpine Raider, that is a 
a uh, creep that probably gives the most in terms of kill potential, right? And poor Roger, Radiant's he's coming to the mid lane to get some killed. levels. I think they're just gonna dive him if, if Rabel doesn't show himself. Okay, he will. Yeah, uh, just shows him, like I say, shows himself to the creeps. It's a great, uh, great set. Excuse, excuse, let me get my words on. Great set of rotation here for Emma Poshka and. Yeah, no, like you said, he's just bullying this out of the dark side. You know, he's I'm pulling sorry, these supports. Rob. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't, uh, don't get mad. <laughs> I didn't stop you from getting the words out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it is. Yeah, I'm Radiant liable, you know, coming into the second series after a, a long three-game series in that last one. Just a couple of tongue twisters maybe come out. So I just need to, uh, just you know, work out the, the, you know, a little bit more. I guess I got I got scared for a second because you said just let me get my words out of it. Okay, Rob, sorry, sorry, just just do it. Good thing from Dark Side they did manage yeah. to uh, steal a stack from uh, from T Spray, so at least something is going their way. Rabel is farming well. He's farming better than the uh, puck, which is to be expected. And with Denio, it's uh, it's gonna be even more. This is Radiant's good because the Abaddon can stay killed. alone in the bottom lane for a long time, and it's all about defending this tower from the Beastmaster right now. Yeah, yeah, and once the, yeah, the six comes out, the abandon yeah, does have that now as well. So the borrowed time does go there. Uh, if he wants to pick it up, he's holding the point just in case. But if he does really get jumped, he's going to be able to put the points into that, um, get himself away, and then maybe like look for his team to respond with TPs, maybe try and turn it around. But yeah, I, I suppose, I, again, the Radiant, so it's a double-edged sword, like you were talking about, the Curse of Vernus, that if it comes out, Collapse going to be able to get the disruption, uh, excuse me, not Collapse, and Mira going to be able to get the disruption off, and Collapse going to be able to come in with a roar to, to, to stop a bad and, and being able to turn the Radiant's burn back onto himself, Dizzy, and he would be in a little bit of trouble if he did get caught out once that borrowed time is down. You know, getting caught out there, going for it, but a nice smoke is coming in from Dark Side. They were out. Yeah, no, they're going to try and come in with the Roll Thunder, but there's going to be the Roll coming connected onto the Pamelia. So that's going to delay so much, but can he get his kill? Collapse, he's trying to get himself away. Split up, does come through. He might be able to take the kill, will be able to get the kill. Collapse, and now the chase down comes onto Mira. Mira, can he try and get himself away from this one? But not how fast Dizian is, he's not going to be able to get himself away. The chase down, the pop, and Rabel will get the kill. Radiance they understand the importance of killing the Beastmaster. The thing is, that these great understand it. They're on our Beastmaster, that means that they're not in the mid lane, and they did so much damage to the mid lane tower and they killed the Rubik, so Spirit, they lose an important Dyer's hero on bottom, bottom tower, but they still uh, get a solid Radiant's trade in the middle lane. Yeah, attack. and like you were talking about in the draft, this double lane pressure that comes up from the edge of the Beastmaster, like you say, that if he can pull the aggro away from this middle lane, the, the edge, you know, even though he uses support, he plays in a great push and roll here, has that damage to come out as well, so Roger, he might be slowed down as well, the Dark Troll Summoner is going to see Roger, Roger through the trees, was that edge to slow him down with the enchant, but let's say Roger, can he get himself away from this one, the skeleton army, Oh. And now the relocate comes in from Sineco now as well. So Rabel, he's got the magic down. He's going to be able to stand on Mopotka. Mopotka just Mopotka overextends, gets caught out and gets punished for it. He's killed. That is uh, where Gilesh comes in. One of the best heroes to uh, to deal with the Enchantress. You're always going to die. Your HP is very low. And, you know, rain drops are not going to help you there because all of uh, the spells are over time damage. Yeah, and how then do you deal with this if you are? you know, on this Enchantress, do you just have to be careful in your rotations and maybe just try and not overextend? Or are you playing that left turn role where you are happy to die if you get the information for the rest of your team? Uh, we'll see. Uh it depends. Now Miposhka can farm the, his own jungle, but once the Ursa has a battle Radiant's fury, you're still gonna do it. If you killed. get the hate, if you get the relocate and force things out like that, you're, you're gonna be fine. And you, you don't care about it. Okay, okay. Uh, we see Rabel's courier being taken down there as well by Yatro by the secret shop. So that's gonna delay the blood zone coming out for the Lesh. In fact, I think he had the gold for it there as well, but it was just taken down. So that does delay the time and, and okay, now he just moved himself over to the secret shop himself and picks it up. They want to push the top lane. So the second that Team Spirit see the dark side are pushing the top lane, they're gonna be uh, reacting towards the bottom lane. Collapse. The, oh no, they're not. He is. Uh, he's farming the ancients. Dark side don't necessarily know this, but this is actually the perfect time to push a tower without uh, risking that your own tower falls. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you do have the defense coming up here. He's still got that Dark Troll Summoner, so the Skeletons are pushing the lane back out here as well. Um, but yeah, maybe if they'd have known where Collapse was, they could have stacked, because he had three or four heroes up here. They could have maybe dove the Enchantress underneath that tier one tower to find the kill and then find the Radiant's tower, which tower might still happen with the rotation up here from the Abaddon. I thought they will, but now, now when there's no left, that's Radiant's not going to be happening. So I'm very much surprised that they just didn't go for Miposhka. And th this is 
kind of the, uh, the, the name of the game for dark side indecisiveness you know and uh being slow right they don't make bad moves per se they just don't make them fast enough they don't make as many of them and that uh that in the end ends up being a problem finally they're gonna be uh bringing more heroes to the uh to the top and to make sure they open up the map for themselves yeah the four comes out you can see that dizzy he was waiting to pop that curse of burns on the tower here as well um just for the extra attack speed after the fortification was awesome yeah the push comes through rable uh, should be able to help push out with the points Dyer's into the Diabol Kedix. And Radiant's while this is going on, at least Collapse is going to be able to send his creep army to push down that tier 1 tower because they know where three or four heroes were. He felt a little bit more comfortable though. Kind of empty, but, uh... We'll see Abaddon getting closer to his uh, sacred relics. He's going to have yeah. that one fairly soon. That's Radiant's quite nice. Middle he does have the mech. He's going for a blink, so he does have some ways to uh, to fight as well. But the gold lead of Spirit is just going to continue to increase. They're uncontested everywhere. Yeah, Yasuo's having a great time as well. Like I say, he's been uncontested. He's about being contested. Mira, he might be in a little bit of trouble here. Even with the Shadow Poison onto Blizzy, he's going to be taken down. And Blizzy does get the kill. But, I mean, it's only two pack, uh, stacks of the Shadow Poison here as well. So, Pango not even going to be on death's door here. Um, what do you expect, Darkseid, in terms Radiant's of wards, trying to, you know, get some information around this Roche pit? Do you have to respect this Ursa, or is it still too early here to say, you know, we need to be dropping the vision, getting that information around the Roche pit? They don't have the strength. They would love to, but they don't have the strength to do much of that. What they do have the strength to do is go to yeah, collapse. Can he get himself away? There's going to be another. Oh, the rock comes out, but the split up. I mean, even Rocky coming into this. I mean, he steals. He steals the axes, not the raw. He would have loved that raw there onto the Rubik. It was so close, and it would have been so fortunate for uh, for Dark Side because the stun from the Lesh comes out at the same time as the roar, so he cannot mm -hmm. get his axes out. And the Rubik is running like, I want that one, and in the end, <laughs> he, uh, he doesn't manage to secure it. Yeah, and. Rable's just going to be able to go back to farming here. Sitting second on the net worth. Just behind that Ursa by about, what's that, 800, 700 gold, something like that. So he's not too far behind, and he's able to flash farm his stacks as well with the Pulse Nova coming through with the... Uh, oh, I'm hearing a Dream Call. It's actually going to be able to Roger, but Roger, what can he do? He's got those axes. He's still going to be... He goes down to the neutral. Okay, okay, Roger. Well done. I'll give you a tip for that yeah, there as well. I mean, you have a Beastmaster on your side. They're going to have to tell Collapse control the beasts, man, because uh, <laughs> they're taking away our kills. We haven't seen that many coils. This is the second one, and the second one also... The first one was also with the Roger in the, uh, in the mid lane when they really killed him. So, overall, Laurel, you know, he's not going to be too happy with his coil usages thus far. No, and I mean, if not for the neutrals, he finds that pickup, so it's no fault of his own there. It was just, you know, third party gets involved and all of a sudden you're losing your kill. Yeah, guys, it's not my I'll fault. I'm just unlucky. <laughs> That's the, uh, that's why, but Laurel is having a solid game in the way. He has the Witchblade, he's gonna get the Blink Dagger, so this puck is pretty much uncontested, and that's, uh, gonna be the case for quite some time. Radiant I don't, I'm scanning. looking at Dark Side, and their lineup should be ahead, you know, with the, or at least not this far behind, so it's, it's gonna be very tough for him to deal enough damage. Yeah, and... So if you are looking here at the Abaddon, he's got himself the Sacred Relic. In fact, he's got the Talisman of Evasion after this creep camp as well. So what's the, the build here? Oh, Mark is here. So we'll have to get back to this now. Well, Raven is going to do this. We have to get back to this. He's being cleaned up. He's from Zaneko. He's going to get the kill to this left. Like, he's going to go down. And it looks like he's going to be a kill. He's going to get back to collapse. They've got that Rolling Thunder on a really, really slim bit of collision. They're going to be able to get a, a really good advantage from this. They take down four. Uh, Snake so mean five? Yeah, let's say five. Ah, well, he relocated to the base. He thought he was going to be saving the Lesh, but that's not the case. Lesh is your strongest hero. The second he dies, the fight is over. And those are the timings on dark side. They get wiped out. They lose the rose this game. It's... Oh, man. It's, it's out of their hands, to be honest. Because this is why you pick an Ursa against these heavy damage-dealing mid laners. Because he can kill them so fast. He rips you yeah. so hard, and you never get the chance to heal. And then possibly even the game. Yeah, EGB given the the zeros over to Team Spirit now as well. Dark side, it's fifteen to one. If you think Dark Side can get this victory here, but it is looking tricky. Six to nine, and yeah, it's just looking so nice here for Team Spirit in the, the first what seventeen the hell? minutes. So if you put your money on Spirit, it's gone. And it's gone. And it's gone. That's what it's gonna be. And 
we're able to go. Yeah, I think I think the same is true for Dark Side probably. Like, yeah. yeah, that's gone because this Radiant's is uh, has been this killed. is one of the biggest. I think this may be the biggest stomp that attack. I've seen in the uh, in the Eastern European DPC so far because they this, they're just destroying them. I don't know how is this, but it's hard to game one, game two, game one. Which one was it? Where... Uh, game one, I think. I think yeah. in game one they had like. Three kills. Networks. Yeah, and it just they couldn't get themselves anything and at least you know Dark Side they got some early kills, they were able to get themselves on the board here and uh Team Spirit they've hit their power point and they're looking to, to run over onto Dark Side. Radiant structure. That is are true, you know, but at, at, in that game I was at least like, attack. oh maybe this timing, maybe they're gonna be doing this. I'm looking at Dark Side and the only thing I feel is despair if I'm trying to put myself in myself in their shoes, because how do you come back from this like, what do you actually do and I, I just i can't seem to find an answer uh oh, 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 it doesn't matter. He's just gonna be able to work them all down, and it's just gonna be 19 minutes. GG to go on the side. They know this game is over. As uh, yeah, with Tia, he's still be in the front. Yeah, the high ground will be over. I think. One thing you know that we didn't mention that didn't really come in handy in this game at all. But uh, when the Abaddon is playing against the Ursa, right? You stack up so many Fury swipes, and then once the uh, borrowed time is done. You just cut him down into hits, right? Because yeah. he has the power.